we are. I wonder if that's part of the because if it's if it's lowering cortisol, isn't it sort of just generally numbing? It, like, aren't you losing a little bit of the richness of life if you're if you're say not uh, as hormonally engaged in a normally arousing um, uh, situation and and perhaps that's impacting aspects of depression? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's no question in my mind that um, not having like these dynamic changes in cortisol activity um, can be part of what leads to the depression symptomology that we see in the pill takers. Because, you know, one of the things that, you know, one way if you like sort of are thinking about cortisol conceptually, like what it does is it helps us, it helps our bodies and our brains absorb our important experiences, right? right. And so like, like you're absorbing, you know, in, in terms of your brain and everything else, like moments that are meaningful, like whether that meaningful moment is like your wedding day, you know, big cortisol surge, or your life's in danger, big cortisol surge. Um, but having these dynamic changes in cortisol is, is, you know, it's associated with like important events. Right. And the idea of not having these dynamic bursts of cortisol activity in some ways, I think, could almost be this. It's, it's almost like getting a biological signal that nothing important is happening in your environment. Right. Like, mm. like you just live in a totally neutral environment where good things or bad things don't happen. It's just like you're flatlined. And um, yeah, and I have no doubt in my mind that um, that this flattened or blunted or absent cortisol um signaling that we get in uh in the pill takers um that that also in addition to the changes in gabaergic activity is also probably associated with some of the mental health problems that we see in women on hormonal contraceptives huh would, would that tend to lower um sex drive as well then potentially because hmm. it would be interesting to take to take this pill so that you can have more sex freely and then right yeah and then well, end up <laughs> Yeah, so so it does decrease, like so, yeah, and and that is um, also one of the the uh, side effects with um, with the pill is um, that it does in a lot of women it, it de decreases um, sexual motivation and in in some women even sexual functioning. So not only do they not really want sex, but when they're having sex, their body isn't responding in the normal ways that women's bodies respond to sexual activity. And, well, I'm um, off the hook for a lot of fail. Of failing. Yeah, <laughs> you're like that was not me. <laughs> yeah. That was not me. That was a pill. That was a pill. Yeah, no. Um, but that's usually, you know, the, the reasons for that. The reason they get those patterns of results is because of um, what happens with uh, testosterone. So one thing that we know about birth control pills is that they increase on the release of what's known as sex hormone binding globulins. And those like bind up your testosterone and make it unusable to your body. Mm. And pill takers have like much higher levels of the, they're called, uh, um, SHBGs. So sex hormone binding globulins, they have much higher levels of these and they have much less usable T. And so that's one of the big reasons that you get reduced sexual functioning in women. And the other one is just that when you're suppressing, um, ovulation and you're suppressing, um, sort of ovarian, you know, uh, maturation of, um, of egg follicles, um, you're suppressing estrogen. And that's the other thing that really fuels female sexual response. And so when you keep both um, estrogen and um, testosterone really low, that's sort of like a recipe for lack of sexual desire. And so, you know, one mechanism by which uh, hormonal contraceptives um, work, right, in addition to suppressing <laughs> ovulation is also, yeah, suppressing of uh, sexual behavior. All the more reason to get a vasectomy. All the more reason.